Hello, my divers, and welcome back to another episode of Diving Deep with me, Des. So, if you noticed, or if you didn't notice, we took last week off. Um, It's been kind of a crazy time, so today's episode is going to be catching you up and telling you about all the craziness that's been going on. So, whenever you're ready, go ahead and grab a snack or maybe two, sit back, and let's get ready to dive. All right, so let's do some quick updates. So if you saw my last episode, or if you listened to my last episode, then I mentioned the SH I was experiencing at work. Um, So I ended up having a Zoom meeting with HR, and nothing really came of it, if I'm being honest. I think... I'm learning that my job kind of likes to sweep things under the rug, and uh, I guess my situations weren't as extreme to them. It's a little invalidating, I'm not going to lie, but I guess it's not enough for them to be fired, especially if I'm the only person that's actually actively speaking out against this and, like, trying to make light of all of this, if that makes sense. Um, so honestly, nothing really came of that. I'm not gonna lie. Um, as for my little cousin's dance, that was actually really fun, really cute. Their theme was... Candy Land, which was one of my favorite games growing up, like, I went to a Vintage Fest thing, like, two summers ago, and I found a vintage board game of Candy Land, so I have that sitting in my closet. Um, I used to watch the fuck out of the movie, because I had it on, like, disc, and... Yeah, that was my favorite movie, so I really loved their theme. Their decorations were really, really cute. Um, It was the first dance that the school had in six years, so it was kind of new to everyone. Well, I don't know, like, the staff, but, like, for my cousins, it was, like, their first ever school dance. So, um, Michelle and I, like, made them corsages, we did their hair, like, and, yeah, it was just really cute, and the kids were There were some kids that were, like, into it, like, it's a dance, we're here to dance, but then, like, it was mostly the boys that were, mm, they kind of were treating it like playground time, which is, like, cool, like, you're seeing your friends, like, after hours, like, you're in school, but not really at school, you know, but some of these kids' parents or supervisors, I feel like needed to step in more, like, I lit, I literally witnessed a kid get body slammed into the wall of their gymnasium and there was like kids like rolling around the floor running around like where my aunt Michelle and I were standing we were kind of close to like their biggest like photo op section so when families would come I'm right there and I I would just like hey like do you want me to take a picture of you like if I see a dad like taking a picture of the mom and the kid and then like her running switching the phone to take a picture of them like I'm gonna help you like obviously a family wants a family picture you know so I would just offer like hey like do you want me to take a picture for you guys like I don't mind and almost every single picture that I took for another person like you could see a random ass little kid like on the floor or like running behind the thing and and they had like a really cute pink balloon arc And it got to the point where it was, like, starting to, like, teeter-totter. And, like, the principal had to, like, DJ D-Rec, cut the shit, like, cut the beat. And had to tell the kids, like, what are we doing here? Like, this needs to stop. Like, stop running behind the freaking big balloon arc that I know for a fact that was not cheap. Because those balloon arcs are not cheap. And... Yeah, once she, like, got that settled, it was a vibe. My little cousin and her friends were, like, so me-coded of them. They were standing next to the DJ booth, like, the whole last hour of the dance. And the DJ, like, took requests. 
So, of course, they were just only requesting Taylor Swift. So, the last, like, 40 minutes of the dance, basically, I felt like I was at the Eras tour. But I just thought it was so funny because her and all her friends were, like, in the DJ booth, like, dancing, like, vibing to their little Taylor Swift. And I was like, that's literally us as fuck. Like, Michelle and I were like, that's us as fuck. And, yeah, they served Domino's. Domino's is always a good time. And they had, like, a little photo booth in their library. And you could, like, text the picture to yourself. And they printed, like, actual little photo booth strips. And it was the cutest thing ever. And then afterwards, we went to B-dubs. And I got B-dubs hot wings. Like, Michelle and I split an order of hot wings. And these were, like overly hot like i mean like i was crying boogers running and i only ate three wings and it felt like i was like licking like the asshole of a jalapeno pepper like i don't not even a jalapeno pepper like it felt like a ghost pepper and a habanero pepper like in my mouth which is so crazy because i love hot wings and like wing stop hot wings i always get and they're never that hot to me so, yeah, I don't know. Those were really fucking hot, but it was good. Um, yeah, and then the next day we went paintballing with my brothers, which that's a whole, I'll let, oh, actually, well, let's dive into that. So, in my first episode, I said, I actually don't know if I said, but I consider myself an only child because I was raised an only child, but when I was 14 years old, I found out that I have siblings through my biological father. And at this time, I i mean, I had met him, but I was fetus. I had no memory of this. So at 14 years old, one day I was like, it was Halloween weekend, okay? And I was at my friend at the time, Morgan's mom's house. And um, we had just had a party the night before. My mom picks me up the next day and she's just like, oh, like, how do you feel about like meeting your dad? And I was like, oh, like, I guess that would be cool. Like, I always had some curiosity about just who my dad was if I had siblings because I always wished for brothers. That was like my thing growing up is I always, always, always wished I had an older brother. And so I was like, oh, yeah, like, that could be cool. Like, sure, I'm down. And she's like, okay, cool. So we're going to go home right now so we can change. And then we're going to go meet him. And I was like, mannequin challenge, what do you mean? Like, like now, like, like now today. And so I'm like rushing home. I'm like not even able to process any of this because everything happened so fast. And then we go to meet my dad. And it was just so trippy because it's like, wow, like, that's, that's my face. Like, that's my face. Because I, I, I mean, my friends say that my mom and I look alike, but I don't, I don't really see it. Like, I see, like, I would say we have, like, the same smile and maybe the same eyes. But other than that, I don't really see it. And it's also that I'm a much darker complexion than, than my mom. And I would always tease her growing up, like, um, I think my godmother's my mom, because my godmother's from the Philippines. So I'd always be like, um, I think you, like, stole me from her, but whatever. Um, and so, like, seeing, like, my fucking face on a man, that's like, what the fuck? And so I met my siblings there, too. And it turned out that I have an older brother. He's a few years older than me. I have an older brother that's three months older than me. We're hood twins, guys. And then I have two little sisters that are, like, obviously younger than me. Um, so, yeah. And then we, like, spent... Okay, this was around Halloween. So then we spent Thanksgiving with them. And it was just, like, a lot. Like, a lot happened that day. So then I didn't see him. They tried to keep contact with me, but I just wasn't really interested. Not that I wasn't interested, but I felt like 
I I just wanted to know who my dad was. I wanted to know what that side of me was like. And I think that that Thanksgiving weekend, I, I'd seen enough. Um, and it turned me off from knowing him because for so long, I feel like I almost resented my mom in a way only because she like kept him and that family away from me but that thanksgiving made me realize like oh shit like she wasn't doing it out of spite she was doing it to save me from everything that i'm witnessing so i didn't really keep contact and then in 20 20, 2021 ish I think I don't I think 2021 um I went to go visit my older brother we um got back into contact I think through Facebook I don't really remember how it played out but I was going to UIUC to visit a friend of mine and at the time that's where my brother and his girlfriend went to college so I was like, hey, like, I'm going to be down here. Like, let's link up, you know? And then I remember us, like, going to, like, this cute bar. And we, like, had lunch. And I was nervous. I was so nervous, actually, because, like, all my life I'd wished to have an older brother. And, like, now knowing that I had it or had one, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I just want him to like me. I want him to think I'm, like, cool. like you're my dna you know and so i remember like being nervous the whole time but still kind of like asking questions and then after that we we would like vaguely keep in touch but um i mean he was at college doing his thing i was kind of in college doing my own thing so you know and then let me think and then like I for, I want to say this was just last year. One day I was just like having an existential crisis at like 3 a.m. as one does. And I just like started texting him through Messenger. And I remember just like asking like every single question that I ever in my life like could come up with. Like, did you know about me? Like, do you like how do you feel about that like what was it like growing up with him like what you know what is it what was it like having that big of a family like stuff like that and he he was very blunt and honest with me but not like he wasn't mean like I, I'm curious I'm a curious gal and I mean I feel like if anyone grew up for a certain amount of time and then all of a sudden realized and was told that they have siblings like anyone would have questions you know so I'm grateful that he like dealt with it and like gave me the answers I wanted and like helped me settle that piece of my mind in a way and then after that I would say that that's when our relationship started getting more consistent like we would consistently reach out and talk to each other and like keep up with each other or like check in on each other I mean and then um a few months later he told me that him and his girlfriend were having a baby and that I think was the final like step to me or like the final push to me that like yes we didn't grow up with each other but I want to be involved. I want to know you guys. I want to know my nephew. Like, just because we had all this time apart doesn't mean that we can't use our time left to build a relationship. And granted, it's not an overnight thing. And I can't just expect to be, like, fully immersed. I'm not even ready for that. But it's been nice just, like, building that relationship with him and building that relationship with his girlfriend and his 
son man that's so crazy i have a nephew like that is so crazy to me to even think about and so one day last year yeah last year i don't remember around what time i would have to go back and look but he invited me to go paintballing and i was like really really nervous because i'd never paintballed before and i didn't know who was going and so i brought michelle with me because michelle's like my safety blanket i take michelle everywhere i go <laughs> and um it was such it was so fun and he you know like um it was so fun and my twin he's not my twin but like my i would consider us twins basically i mean we're three months apart so my he was there too and I had some cousins there and an uncle there. And it was really cool just, like, being able to talk to them. It's, like, I don't know, man. It's so, like, trippy to me still to this day. Like, when I'm, like, oh, yeah, like, my brother. I, like, catch myself, like, holy fuck, like, my brother. You know what I mean? And, yeah, I don't really talk to my twin, um as much as i would like to but i think that just because of how everything played out and because i didn't grow up with him it's hard i'm assuming it's hard for him to process and navigate that which i can't blame him for and i can't expect him to text me all the time or talk to me all the time you know what I mean um but I remember that first time that we all went paintballing together I well, okay when we go paintballing we layer the fuck up like layer up and so and I hadn't seen him in since I was 14 I mean like Josh my oldest brother I'd seen occasionally but I didn't see my twin since I was 14 so you know, it's, and when I, like, went, I, like, kind of just kept my head down, like, because it's just awkward, like, how do you even, like, I don't know, but yeah, and I remember the, like, when we made eye contact for the first time that day, I, we, like, locked eyes from, a, from across where we park our cars, and I saw, like, rays of light around him, I don't know, it's, like, I felt like what I'm assuming a, a, a genuine actual twin would feel like. I I don't know. I made we made eye contact and it was so brief. Like I probably I would say it was probably like a second, but to me it felt like 30 and I just saw rays of light around him. And I like I just like remember like stopping in my tracks like whoa like whoa like whoa <laughs> and yeah like I don't know I think about that all the time and then so when you go paintballing your paintball gun has like a like an oxygen tank like an air tank thing that helps your paintball shoot further right so at this place that we go to paintballing they have a room where you can fill your air tank more so Michelle and I went in there to go fill our tanks and my oldest brother was in there and he was helping us fill our tanks and I had I experienced deja vu and during me experiencing deja vu I also saw like those rays of light around him and it just like solidified to me that like I need to like this is my family, you know, like, this is my DNA, like, we have the same fucking face, damn near, like, so I think, like, that, and also, like, my brother's girlfriend being pregnant at the time, like, or she, I didn't find out till, like, a little bit after, I think, but, like, those two things combined, like, made, made me feel like, okay, yeah, like, I want to have a connection with them and i i'm 
blessed that everyone is alive and healthy and we are all still young that we have our whole lives to establish a connection and i mean like i said i want to be there for my nephew like not even just for my brothers i would like to talk to my sisters i haven't seen my sisters since when i was 14 like i don't know anything about them i want to be there for my siblings i want to be there for my nephew i mean i literally i have um on my brother's girlfriend's instagram a few years back i commented like oh i can't wait to be the cool rich aunt one day and so like when they told me she was pregnant i like i remember sharing her announcement post and then like adding that comment screenshot to it too like yeah i want to be the cool rich gay aunt like this is my time to shine people like let's do this so yeah we went paintballing with them and it's actually really fun i feel like i'm in a video game in paintballing if you haven't gone if you're like scared of paintballing because i'm not gonna lie i was pretty scared honestly it's just fun just layer the fuck up and you're good to go but you have to like get into it like don't let your fear stop you from like fully being able to experience it because like the first time I was kind of scared and so I feel like that like held me back from like fully indulging it but now when we go I'm I'm on the floor I'm crawling in between things I'm tucked and covered in hiding and I was really good this time I shot my brother in the shoulder I shot another guy in in the head and I was getting cocky with it. I really was. I'm not going to lie. And there was one round where I was like one of the last people on my team. And I shot someone and then I ran out of paint in my gun. So when someone else in my team. No, I don't think anyone that was on the field still knew that I was in. And so then the other person on my team that was still in, he like ran. So while he was running, I like got the attention of my teammates that were out and I had someone like give me their gun so I could use the rest of that paint to like try to get more people and then I ran out of paint again so I just had to like stay hiding until the ref called game and I felt like I was in a movie like that's like that game like what is that game that everyone plays like um modern warfare war english modern warfare type shit like i felt so badass like i felt like those scenes in like our army movies or like spy movies or whatever where you like it it's like slow motion you like throw the gun switch the gun like blah, blah, blah. that's how i felt that's literally how i felt it was raw as fuck and yeah so we did that so yeah we did that um that day after the dance and then Sunday was pretty chill. We just hung out, played some Switch. And then it went back to work. This week at work, guys, has been fucking insane. In fucking insane. Like, it feels like I just went through all 12 months in the span of five days. And I am going to blame the Eclipse, actually. Me and Miss Eclipse, we have to have a talk. Because what the fuck like what the fuck so monday oh my gosh okay so my job right um i want to say like three weeks ago it feels like fucking 30 weeks ago but three four weeks ago my coworker and i got told that they were going to put another person to work with us and they were like oh this lady has experience with special needs kids like she's cool like you guys are gonna get along just fine she's gonna be a great addition specifically told me basically tell her what you want her to do because she's just there to help you i'm like okay cool like as long as you listen stay out of my way and zip your fucking mouth we'll be chilling bro this will be easy do you think she did any of that mm, no the answer is no and okay let's pause my mom told me she doesn't like when i film by myself because i talk too much shit 
Mom, you're going to hate this next part because I'm going to talk shit. My middle name is talk shit. I'm going to talk shit this next part. So, this woman is so, like, actually, actually, actually one of the most infuriating people I have ever encountered in my life. And I used to fight people. I used to actively fight people. And this woman, like, I'm, like, getting angry just, like, thinking about it. She is so repulsive. And I mean, like, okay. We work with special needs kids, correct? One of my students sits on a potty pad, okay? They wear diapers. They sometimes have accidents. It's fine. Like, that's not a problem, you know? That's why we have the potty pads. But when you're trying to reuse a potty pad that is soiled with period blood... I want to hit you. That's when I want to hit you. And when I called her out on it, she says, oh, I didn't see it. If you cannot see a red spot on a big white, I'm assuming cotton piece of fabric, and you wear glasses, Baby, you better drive your ass to America's Best once we're off the clock and get that shit fixed. Because what do you mean? I didn't see it. Are you going to see my fucking fist hitting your eyes? What the fuck? Like, what the fuck? There's another student we have. He, okay, basically, we have this other student. He needs to be in extra safety things for himself okay he's not a harm to others but when he gets mad he harms himself and it's actually really really sad to see so to prevent this we have these extra safety things in place to avoid all that right and we drilled it into her pea-brained mind every single day Make sure all of these safety things are in play. Make sure all of these safety things are in play. All of these safety things need to be in play. Do you think she fucking put them in play? No, no. She left this kid loose. Completely, not completely. I'm going to stop being dramatic. But half of the safety things that he's required to have on did not have them on. And had I not walked past him, I would not have known. And mind you, these kids are nonverbal in the sense that they wouldn't be able to sit here and talk to you as much as I'm talking to you. But they're still able to concoct words together so that you can understand enough of what they're saying so if i'm walking past this student who is nonverbal and he is holding these safety things that are not in play in his hand and saying this one this one confused as fuck i'm looking at this kid confused as fuck that's a problem. If I've told you every single day, this has to be there. This has to be. Why the f <clears throat> Right. And she's also just fucking disgusting. She would leave her old granny candy wrappers all over our workplace. And I know it was her because she offered me one of these nasty ass. And it's not even like the good little strawberry ones. It's not even like the good little caramel ones. Like it's like some random ass, like no brand ass, like, oh, and she would just leave it everywhere, everywhere. And she was just so careless and so, like, I understand our role in the these children's day isn't hard, okay? 
I would say it's not hard. When it's a good day, it's a great day. Everything flows smoothly. The day goes by quickly. We're fine. So when you're taking a not hard job and you're constantly making mistakes that I've already had to correct you and redemonstrate for you multiple times when I'm not even a trainer, I'm not even a certified trainer, I don't even get training pay and you're still finding ways to come up with such utterly idiotic mistakes i'm gonna get you removed because you're gonna piss me off and i'm gonna get you removed so that's exactly what i did i got her removed and then they gave us a different person and Okay, so the point of our district special needs principals, I don't really know their title, but basically the people in our district that are in charge of setting the rules for the special needs environments that we work in, the point of us adding a second person into our work environment was for safety concerns that they had between two of my students and also because I'm only 5'3 I'm 120 pounds on a good day and some of my students are not as small as me and that's okay you know everyone grows at their own rate and at their own it's all hereditary, honestly. So their concern was that I might not be able to manage in the case of an emergency, right? That's that's realistically why they wanted us to have a second person. Or technically a third person, but like my coworker does one thing, I do another thing. So it's a second a second person to also be me, if that makes sense. So they gave us this other lady. This lady. Okay, well, for starters, like I just said, the whole point of having the second me, essentially, is for safety concerns. So, okay, the whole point of a second me, essentially, is for safety reasons. They replaced the first lady I got removed with a lady who is on a cane and that's no hate to her I'm not an ableist I'm not trying to demean her but I don't know why they thought that that was the best suited replacement because again these kids are not the smallest and they're actually really fucking strong so what did they think this woman on a cane would be able to provide that I would not be able to you know what I mean and I'm not even tr- I'm really 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 not trying to come off as like ableist or anything that's like let's just keep it a buck you know so we were already hesitant to begin with and then this woman also used to be a I found out she used to be a coach an athletic coach but she also used to be a mental health specialist she's gotten removed from other environments and departments prior to being with us because she feels the need to use a whistle to control children as if they were herds of fucking sheep First off, if if I were to go see a mental health specialist, 
and this woman is who I would have had to see, I would have offed myself. And I'm not even trying to, like, be, like, me. Like, I don't, she is very, very clearly not suited, not because she's on a cane, not because she used to be a coach. In the week that, in a half, or the two weeks that we spent with her, I've never seen anyone lack more of a general self-awareness to herself, to other people, to the environment. Like, I just don't understand. Like, truly, I don't understand. But she, like, would co- she came on our bus, and I told her her roles and what I expected out of her, which was the same thing I had told the woman previous to her. She comes in and immediately is trying to change up the whole routine. Now, a thing with special needs kids, they need a routine. And these kids, they've been at this school now all these years, right? They've established a routine. You cannot just come in and try to change up their routine that's going to throw them off and that's what she was trying to do and that's exactly what happened and so the whole time my coworker and I were very much apparent that like no offense but you're not needed here realistically you're not needed here so your roles is just stay in the back I assigned her two students to like you know, just take care of them, watch them. If I'm too busy or if I can't make it to them fast enough, make it to them, you know? She started doing way too much. Like, the first lady was doing not enough. This second lady, way too much. One of my students loves to sing. Loves to sing. And granted, he maybe he's not the best but I love that he is comfortable and happy enough if he wants to sing Jack Black at the top of his lungs sing Jack Black Britney Spears covers at the top of your lungs I'm not gonna stop you because you're happy and seeing him smile and be happy that makes me smile and be happy and that makes my other co-worker smile and be happy it's a we've established a safe place for our students to comfortably feel Like, they can be their truest, most authentic self. And I love that. This lady did not love that. And it got to the point where I felt she was bullying him because she would stand right behind him and go, turn it down. You need to stop. You need to turn it down. Like, you need to turn it off. You need to stop. Who the- You need to stop, lady! Who the fuck are you? Who literally are you? And then there was, there's another student of mine. She loves basketball. She'll watch basketball and she gets into it. She'll scream. She'll like boo. She'll like loves basketball. That's her passion is basketball. She loves basketball. And this lady was doing the same thing. And she's like, you need to, you need to turn it down. You need to stop. Like that's enough. Settle down. I'm like, lady. First off, my this student's deaf. She's not going to listen to you. And even if she could listen to you, she she doesn't have to. Who are you? Who are you? Why are you telling my students how to act and what to do if that's not your position, that's not your role, that's not why you were brought on? If my coworker and I, who are in charge of our environment, Don't have an issue with my student singing at the top of his lungs. My student that wants to watch basketball and be a little cheer audience member. Like, my student that wants to play Sonic video games. If we're not saying that there's a problem, why are you trying to make it one? And why are you feeling the need to have to stand over their shoulder turn it down turn it down bitch you turn it down you sit the fuck down get the fuck out of the way like what the fuck is wrong with people one thing i've learned at my job two things i've learned my job is full of people that lack control in their personal lives so therefore 
they come to work looking for ways to establish that control and they get off on having the control at work whether it be over employees whether it be over students because it compensates for the lack of of control that they have in their personal lives i don't like that leave the students alone like leave the students alone and another thing is a lot of the people we work with we work for a school district a lot of these people don't like kids why are you working in a school student based environment if you don't like kids if you don't have the patience for kids what are you doing here besides wasting my time wasting my patience wasting the school district's resources because now we're having to pay your fucking stupid ass when you clearly very much don't even want to be here and you're doing nothing but causing like harm mental harm i would say to these students because you're quite frankly bullying them out of being who they are when we've not once ever told them or you to tell them to stop leave these kids alone like what the fuck it's gotten to the point where like i'm very protective and motherly over my students like anyone that even like tries to tell them anything i'm immediately like uh, uh, sh- 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 sh. it's not your turn to speak like zip it leave my students alone go elsewhere you know so this lady was just like doing way too fucking much so we got her removed right we got her removed and okay okay i'm getting angry again i'm getting angry we get her removed and they removed her after the morning portion of our shift so we go on our break come back to the office to check in before I go do my afternoon portion of my shift. I go into the office, first red flag of the afternoon. This is literally just two days ago. So I'm filming this on Friday. This happens Wednesday, right? (sighs) Okay, so I go into the office. First red flag is everyone in the office is saying hi to me, everyone. And that doesn't usually happen when I walk into the office. So that was my first red flag. Mm, y'all, something's going on. Then, second red flag, I go to the bathroom. Because the bathroom in the office is a lot nicer than our designated bathrooms. So I go quick pee. As I'm going to pee, who do I see? The first lady we got kicked off. Yep. Yeah. But she wasn't alone. She was with another lady that works there that I don't know. So I was like, oh, maybe she's just here waiting for her next duty, right? So I walk out. And... Okay. Now I'm getting annoyed. Walk out. Go to my section. My coworker comes in. And who who do you think I see behind my coworker? the first lady i had to get kicked off yep yeah yeah so i'm immediately displeased i'm immediately filled with rage i felt like she hulk herself took over and oh my god what i'm you know i'm angry when i shut the fuck up Because if you know me, you know I hardly ever shut the fuck up. So I was so angry that I just sat there. Our afternoon part of the shift, we have like an hour before our students are in our space again, okay? So this whole hour that it's just the three of us, I'm blue as fuck. And I mean like blue as fuck. Headphones in, music's blasting. The one coworker I like, th- that that's who I work with daily. She's, like, trying to talk to me. I'm, like, can't hear nothing. I'm, like, on my rap shit, can't hear nothing, bro. So, about 15 minutes before the kids come in, I'm starting to set up their 
iPads, set up their blankets, set up just their little trinkets and stuff that they use to get them through the day. And this fucking lady is just standing in the middle of my fucking way, just like, la, 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 la. So I jump over a chair, and when I jump over this chair to get to what I need to get to, my foot accidentally kicks her shoulder. Oops, am I sorry? No. Did I say sorry? No. And she actually says, oops, sorry. Again, music's up, babe. I'm not listening to anything. She looks at me, and she goes, do you have a problem with me? Granny, I'm gonna need you to tone it down. Tone it the fuck down. Immediately, when someone is, do you have a problem with me? Oh, bitch, it's up. That's how I know it's up. And so I was like, baby, I've been waiting for this moment. I was, I'm, I'm ready to cook here, you know? So I, I take my headphones. No, I don't even take my headphones off. I'm pretty sure I just lower the music. And I said, yeah, actually, I do. I do, actually, yeah. And she said, well, why? What's your problem? And I said, you, I don't know why you're here. I, I don't know why you're here. Well, why? Mm, because you, I actually am the one that got you kicked off. I don't, like, removed. I don't know why you're here. And she's like, well, why did you do that? And I said, mm, you've showed me that you're incompetent. You showed me that you cannot handle being here. Therefore, I got you kicked off, babe. And after that, after that, it was up. It was up. And I mean, yelling, screaming, like she was like saying, she's like, well, why did you get me kicked off? I said, because you're disgusting. You're incompetent. You're repulsive. And I I fed back to her. I said, you try to reuse a soiled pad. Oh, well, I didn't see it. I pointed to her face and I said, then you need to get a new prescription. What is that? Tell me you can't see it. What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, Ray Charles, what the fuck? Ray Charles? Is he the blind guy? I don't know. You know, I don't know. So... And I'm so I'm like spitting back to her everything I said. And she's like, well, you're the one that shouldn't even be here. I'm I'm looking around trying to find who she's talking to. What do you mean I shouldn't be here? Baby, this is quite literally my job. Quite literally my job. What do you mean I shouldn't be here? You are only here because I kicked you off. I kicked off your replacement. And they didn't really have anyone to replace with so last minute. So, no, baby, you shouldn't be here. And then she started saying that, oh, you're so childish, blah, 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 blah. Mm, bitch, I'm only 22. You're like 65. Shut up. Like, shut the fuck up. And this lady, like, oh, like, this lady is weird, bro. Like, like one of the first times we met, she's like, oh, like, are you married? Do you have any kids? I was like, no, I'm only 22. And she went, only 22? My sister was married at 15. I said, mm, that's quite literally illegal. And she's like, well, no, my dad signed off the papers. And I was like, your dad should be in prison. In federal prison right next to R. Kelly. Like, what are you talking about? And she would always just like, Oh, like, there's another time where my coworker was like, yeah, like, you know, this is a hard week. Like, this is the death anniversary of my dad. Like, so, like, basically, like, you know, if I'm off, this is why type thing. And this bitch, yeah, well, August is hard for me because this, this, and because my mom died, my dad died, my grandma died, my dog's neighbor died, like, my goldfish. Like, girl, th- first off, we're in fucking March. Who the fuck gives a fuck about August right now? And who the fuck? asked why when someone's like being vulnerable like yeah like this is a hard week because my dad died you're yeah well six months from now it's gonna be hard for me bitch in six months from now i'm not seeing you i'm not hearing you i'm not thinking about you like oh what a waste of an atom and 
our fight in our environment got to the point where I was literally like, you're a waste of resources, you're a waste of life, you're a waste of air, you're you're just a waste! Like, holy fuck, you're a waste! I've never met someone so infuriating and so incompetent, and it's not even that she's incompetent, it's just that she's a lazy fucking bitch, bro, like so lazy so lazy so disgusting why is it always the laziest and most disgusting people that are married like i just know her husband hates her i just know he fucking hates her like holy shit i'm like getting like ugh, like i need to okay let's breathe let's take a deep breath So yeah, once it got to the point where we were just calling each other waste of space, like, that's when my other coworker was like, okay, like, maybe let's wrap it up, you know, our students are about to be here, like, let's, like, we're done, you got it all out, yeah, yeah, cool. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good, I'm going to sit down, and this bitch is walking away, mumbling shit under her breath. If you know me, you know there's nothing more that I hate in this life then if I just gave you the chance to argue with me and we're done and we both established we're done and then you fucking continue to walk the fuck away from me and talk shit under your stink ass fucking breath. Oh my god, I wanted so bad. I literally, I'm, I'm sitting there fucking shaking. I'm fucking trembling. And I, I, I'm, I, when I'm angry like that, when I'm that fucking angry, I shake and I cry. Because there's nothing more that I want to do in that moment than grab you by the back of your fucking neck and slam your head into the fucking ground until I can see every single atom and particle from your fucking brain. I was so angry, like, holy fuck. I immediately turned around. I said, what the fuck are you saying? What the fuck did you say? Oh, I didn't say anything. You want to call me childish, but you're fucking damn near a walking corpse, and you're going to walk away talking shit, even though you want it to be all big and bad in my face? Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Nothing just, like, makes me, like enraged more than a fucking coward a fucking coward bro and i fucking i've experienced cowards like that like bitches that like when i see you it's on site when i see you it's on site but then when we're on site they're like chewing my fucking asshole like bitch shut up like shut up oh my god oh my god okay and then But yeah, so, um, I got her removed again, and hopefully this time it fucking sticks in their fucking brains that I cannot work with this lady. I cannot work with her. I will not work with her. Honestly, they are so, like, it took everything in me when I even saw her enter the room to not just leave, to literally just walk up out, not tell anyone, and leave. And- even the next morning, so yesterday morning, as I'm getting ready for work, well, first off, that whole night, and as I'm getting ready the next day, I'm, like, rocking back and forth, I'm, like, pacing, I'm, like, I need to call off, I need to call off, I'm not even gonna call off, it wasn't even, I need to call off, it was, I need to stay home, it was, I need to not subject myself to that again, and it's also, I was, pu I was pulling up applications, I was I'm not gonna lie, I was applying for jobs while I was fucking sitting there trying to cool up. I'm, like, fucking shaking, trying to, like, jobs near me. Like, I was livid because why, 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 why am I constantly reporting people for being incompetent pieces of shit? Why am- what is the point of reporting someone if you're only going to- Put me in that situation again. Literally, what is the point of reporting then? What the fuck is the point? And, like, the communication in my department is so... It's so bad. Like, it's literally so bad. It's embarrassing. Why do my nonverbal students have better communication than the grown-ass adults that are in charge? 
that's embarrassing it's a fucking joke like it's a literally a joke and not even a funny one like oh my god these people enrage me like so enrage me like i think okay because like i said i i was in the office right before this everyone in the office acknowledged that i was in the fucking office why did no one take 10 seconds to be like hey fyi just a warning we have to have her with you today only because it's too last minute to get anyone else granted i would have still been livid as fuck but at least that would have given me time to mentally prepare myself before entering my work environment and having to deal with the broad because i and it's also like if i'm sitting in silence if my music is so loud that you can hear it from six feet away from me if i'm actively ignoring your existence as a whole and then you're gonna ask me do we have a problem and then i start answering the question that you just asked me why are you getting mad why are you getting mad you asked me a question i'm telling you the answer i'm telling you you're disgusting you're incompetent you are a fucking joke of a human being of an employee you can't get mad babe you asked me a question i'm answering your question you're welcome this is feedback i'm telling you how not to be fucking disgusting i'm telling you how to fucking be more competent at work like oh my god you're welcome you are welcome go somewhere go play your fucking wordle or whatever the fuck word search like oh my god uh, oh my god every day that i live in this town and work with these people i become more of an ageist i'm so sorry to say that and like that's not at all what i would like to say i am but i'm so if renee rap said it i can say it i'm becoming an ageist because what the fuck is wrong with old people like quite literally what is wrong with old people and they're not even old i don't necessarily say that being 65 is old but it's also like if you are working with essentially me as your boss yes i'm young yes i don't look like someone that would be taken seriously but we're in a position and a role where you need to take me seriously then just fucking do it if you wanted to be the boss babe you've had 65 years to be a boss but you're not and now you're working with me i'm making more money than you and you want to take that out and be mad at me you're a white old person you had all that you had so many ways to step up and climb up the ladder and you chose not to don't be mad at me bitch you wasted your fucking privilege what the fuck oh my god yeah guys yeah 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 what can i fucking say um what can i fucking say i yeah i don't know like how what i'm pretty sure this started with me talking about the eclipse and then i just got so viciously angry um i took a break i'm back so the eclipse guys um it's not been easy at least for the people in my life i know it's not been easy i know this eclipse represented like um new birth new beginnings like just a whole like revamp your life type thing like two people i know are going through breakups like it's rough out here right now but it's also like hello it's the moon the moon controls water. We are water. We are quite literally water. And I'm not like, I don't claim to be religious. I don't really claim anything right now. I think that the current journey of my life right now is finding out what I believe in in that sense. But I watched um the episode of just trish that trisha did with moses where he was saying that like 
realistically, like, we are just water. And it sounds insane. I'm, ne- I'm not ever going to be able to explain it the way that Moses was able to explain it. But if you guys go and find and watch that episode, like, I don't know the way that Moses was explaining it. I was like, no, but like, yeah, like, the human body is what, 75% of water? Water has memory water holds memory water like can like oh fuck like i don't know like he knows so much more about it but like the way he was talking about stuff i was it it just made sense to me so like i would say that i'm spiritual i guess i there's things i do and don't believe in but there's things I also don't know whether I believe in them or not. Like, reincarnation is trippy as fuck. Like, do I believe Trisha Paytas' baby is Queen Elizabeth? A little bit, not gonna lie. I think we're water. I think I think what Moses said was that, like, we reincarnate through the water in us. I think think that's what he said and it kind of made sense because again water holds memory yeah but yeah basically basically if you had a not so easy time this week it's the eclipse man it's the eclipse moon controls water we are water do you guys like my pippy long stocking braids Something today just told me, like, let's do some cute little braids. I need to take, like, a 23 in me. like, actually. My mom took one. And I really want to take one. But what scares me with those is that they're constantly, like, updating your, like, percentages and, like, where your background is. And it's, like, why are you retesting my saliva? Why are you keeping my saliva? And then why are you retesting my saliva? enough to where it's updating like once every few months is that not like worrisome to anyone like that's like weird right can like can we agree that that's like kind of sus like why why oh today i finished my lemmy vitamin this is not sponsored at all i doubt they would ever sponsor me but I got curious and I fell into the trap of buying these. First off, the package is so cute. Like, come on. How could you not? I ordered Let Me Purr and Let Me Debloat. Would I order these again? Probably, most likely not. The packaging is cute. They're $30 and they come with 60 gummies. But you're supposed to take two a day. So it's like 30 days worth of gummies. I think they work, but I think I could find something less expensive that could probably do the job just as good, if not better. I mean, the Lemmy Purr, I I feel like I it made a difference, but again. Could I probably have made the same difference by just drinking pineapple juice every day? Probably. And the let me de bloat. I feel like I would I would notice my morning skinny. But also well for starters, I've gained weight. I think everyone after high school, you gain weight. And I'm on a journey of accepting that I'm not 16 with an eating disorder anymore. I'm not going to be a size zero for the rest of my life. So, accepting that I've gained weight has been a battle in itself. And I think that that is the main thing that pushed me to try Let Me De Bloat. Because I also have been pretty bloated. But it's also like, bitch... We'll stop eating hot Cheetos and hot wings for every fucking meal. You know what I mean? So, let me de-bloat. I feel like, again, bitch, run. Bitch, exercise. Like, don't fucking, don't have half a pizza be your midnight snack, you know? Like, did it work? Uh, 
Like, did it work enough for me to buy it again? No. No. And I was, when I was, like, at the halfway mark of these, I was, like, tempted to try, like, the Lemmy. People say the Lemmy Burn is really good. But, like, bitch, just run. It's summertime. Like, go outside. Spend that time in the sun. Like, what are you spending $30 on vitamins for? On one thing of vitamins? Like, uh, no. So, let me purr, bitch, just drink some pineapple juice, drink some cranberry juice, take women's health vitamins. What I do want to try is, I hear that prenatal vitamins are actually really good for you, like, um, it helps with hair, it helps with nails, it helps with skin, it helps with, like, vaginal health, it, it does everything in one, basically, and, like, granted, it makes you more fertile, but, like, bitch, I'm gay. Like, if I'm, if I get pregnant in the near future, I must be the next Mary, Mother Mary, because there's just no way. So, I think I would like to try prenatal vitamin. Um, I, I need to, and that's that I need, actually, I don't know, maybe I do need to, but I want to get into vitamins and just, like, taking my health more seriously. I mean, so many people are dying of cancer now like it's actually very frightening and it's like younger people that definitely shouldn't be getting cancer so that's kind of like making me like okay like we need to strap in get it together work on our health mental physical emotional all of it right so I want to take vitamins but I don't really know like what is worth taking like some people will say like magnesium some people will say fucking ashwagandha some people will say like fucking prenatal like you know there's just so many things and it's also like i don't want to be popping eight vitamins every morning like i'm a fucking pill addict so if you have any vitamin recommendations please comment those below or send me a dm because like what the fuck do people take what do you take i'm not a fucking vitaminologist like i don't know but yeah, I just need to take my health more seriously. Not even like that I don't take it seriously. I would like to say I'm pretty healthy. But again, I have to understand I'm not 16. I, I don't have that metabolism. I don't have, I'm not getting as active as I used to be. My cardio is so bad compared to what it used to be. So my goal for the summer is like, get up and run. Like, get up and run. Um, I actually really like running. It's just, like, the act of, like, getting out and up to do it. And, like, my town is, like, so white that, like, once it's, like, a degree above 60, everyone's outside, everyone's walking, everyone's running, everyone has their dog. And it's, like, I like to run, like, a clear path, no one in my way. I like to drive the same way. Clear path, no one's in my way. Lately, driving in my town is another thing that's made me, like, maybe I am ageist. Because the people in my town are just, like, first off, I'm pretty sure the average age of my town is, like, dead-ass 60. Like, I would have to look it up, but, like, I'm pretty sure it's, like, damn near 60. And I just feel that after a certain age, maybe we don't need to be driving anymore. I think after a certain age, maybe we should be required to retest our driving abilities a lot more frequently. I think when it gets to the point that you are driving 10 miles below the speed limit and constantly hitting your brakes, even when there's a green light and there's no other cars around, that's a problem, babe. I don't think you should be driving. Everything is online you can order your groceries online you can order fucking toilet paper online like you can order clothes like stay home when i retire i'll be damned if i'm leaving my house i i mean like i'll go like get a cute little like lunch or like a cute like i'll like go out but like to be like on the road driving to be like working still like no, once I'm retired, I'm done with society. I'm going to do my thing at home. I'm definitely not fucking working past retirement. Like, you have me fucked up. Get your money up. Why do you have 65 years of life and you're still trying to work 
past retirement age. Retire and lay the fuck down. Like, what do you mean? Lay the fuck down. When I retire, I'm going into hibernation. I'm sleeping minimum two weeks straight. Like, do not disturb. Put a diaper on me if you have to. Like, what? Why do you want to be so involved in everything once you retire? This is your time to retire. Aren't you tired? Another thing I want to do when I retire is travel. Like, hella travel. Like, I'm trying to, I don't care if I'm 70 in a bikini on a beach. Bitch, you're going to see these saggy titties. Like, I don't care. I'm trying to live it up. I'm trying to live it up now, but especially when I retire. Because what is the point of working, like, fucking three-fourths of our life to have only a fourth of our life left to enjoy after retirement and then not enjoying it? What are you doing? What are you doing? But yeah, guys, that's me. I'm just rambling. I'm just a girl. But yeah, that's me. Um, I don't know. I kind of like these solo episodes. Um, episodes with guests is like fun. Like, I actually love having guests. It's just the scheduling and trying to make it happen that is complicated but other than that like everything's fun everything's great so yeah guys that's me that's what i've been doing that's what's been happening those are my thoughts my ideas my brain i'm getting delusional because i've been awake since like 6 30 this morning for work so i'm gonna tune out now so go ahead follow diving deep with des on instagram come Comment below some vitamins to take. Oh, comment below if, like, you think this should solely just be podcast. Or, like, do you guys want to see, like, vlogs? Like, little, like, shop with me's. Like, is that, like, cute? Like, is that what you want to see? Or should I just, like, keep that on TikTok? You know what I mean? Um, Comment down. Let me know. DM us on Diving Deep With Does on Instagram. Um, Go ahead. Like, comment, subscribe, share with Everyone you fucking know, tell your mom to post it on her Facebook. I know she got all your tias and tios, and they're going to be all up watching it. Um, Share, turn on those post notifications, because I think my talking shit has been getting me shadow banned a little bit. Um, We also post every episode on Spotify, so you can check that out on Diving Deep with Des. It's the video format as well. But, I don't know, some people like Spotify better than YouTube because some people just listen to it. So, I like having that option for you guys, too. But, yeah, guys, I'll see you next time on another episode of Diving Deep with me, Des. Bye.